We found out about the launch opportunity about a week before the rocket was supposed to launch. We knew the payload would be going in an experimental amateur rocket, but we had very few details about what the payload bay would look like. We did our best to make a device that would give us the most possible data on how the phone and sensors operate during a launch. This ended up being a system of two phones and an Arduino microcontroller connected to sensors. At 9 at night, we packed everything into a rental minivan and drove to Nevada. We're in Reno, the biggest little city in the world. Rocket Mavericks and the Sony and Intel sponsors had brought in about 10 RVs and set up what was basically a small town. Uh, my name is Tom Atchison, uh, I'm the chairman of the Mavericks Civilian Space Foundation. Uh, Mavericks was an organization started by Tom Rouse and a few guys in the hobby area. And the organization was basically put together out of their desire to push beyond hobby and start flying um, uh, what are more traditionally commercial aerospace type applications, but there was a huge learning curve. I gave a three year commitment um, and uh, we got the organization pulled together. and. Flights today is probably the pinnacle of where we're at. Um, so there's a lot of exciting things happening, and uh, I feel blessed with just such a great group of people. One of the first things we found out was that there was no guarantee we were going to get our phones Seven, back in one piece. Six, five, four, three, two, one, ignition. Godspeed. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Uh, this, this was the high altitude bioprospector which uh, sampled air at altitude and um, it had a, a flight computer running Linux and so on. It had quite a lot of stuff in it. Uh, as you can see it made a very hard landing and it was just basically thrown forward onto a steel bulkhead which ironically survived. The, you can see it over there, the actual rocket itself is more or less intact but this was made of less strong stuff and it's just constituted in completely flat. One of the other casualties was venture capitalist Steve Yurvitson's rocket that returned to Earth without its parachute. A beer was poured out in its honor. The next day we prepared our first payload to travel to 200,000 feet. Okay, so right now uh, we're outside of this truck where they are integrating the payload that it's going to fly in this rocket. Today is going to be our first test of our project. We're going to fly only this cell phone. The rocket that we would be flying on was a custom-made dual-stage vehicle designed by Rocket Mavericks. Although the rocket had been tested to a certain extent, we knew that there was a good chance we wouldn't recover our phone or any of the data it was recording. We'll bring the payload back, but, uh, uh, um, but no guarantees on the flight readiness of the airframe quite yet, but we're almost there. So this here is the booster stage of the rocket that our payload is flying up on. So for the first launch, it's going up to hopefully 200,000 feet and what we're flying is just a single cell phone recording data with an accelerometer and also hopefully a camera shooting out the side or maybe just shooting inside the dark rocket so we'll have to see when we fall back how long before we launch less than 60 seconds less than 60 seconds we have a specific order for guy wire connected Uh, the way you saw was a successful launch where our payload, uh, Nexus One Android, was uh, on board. There's word that uh, some of the parts may be 30 feet in the ground <laughs> in this mud, so that'll be fun. Uh, I think they're probably digging it out right behind us. We saw a couple parachutes deploy. Uh, one of them was sort of partial, it looked like, so sort of verdicts out on that. We're not really sure whether the phone survived. 
So we brought it in a little heavy and rough, but uh, we brought all the payloads back, so I'm happy with that. In the booster failure we had, basically some of these screws melted because of dynamic heating uh, at, when it left the mock envelope. Everything shred, Kevlar snapped, booster came in ballistic, um, but the uh, payload section and all of that, um, the emergency stuff in the, in the avionics kicked in and uh, brought payloads back on the first one, and in the second one separated and brought payload back. Uh, battery, just... Okay. <laughs> that's just gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. So we recovered the cell phone. Uh, apparently the display didn't survive. I'm glad. We recovered the SD card. So we will be able to see if uh, the data that records and uh, probably analyze it. Well, you know, the Black Rock Desert is a pretty special place. Um, it's a very spiritual place for me. I, I'm not a real religious person in the classic sense, though I have my own beliefs, but I can see why Jesus would go for walks in the desert with all these people chasing him around. Um, you can think out here. Um, there is something quite remarkable about being in a place where as far as you can see, there's absolutely nothing man -made. The next morning, we prepare to launch our primary payload. Today, our goal is hopefully to fly um, our full payload, so that includes one phone taking video and audio, another phone taking photos as well as recording data, um, and then the third piece is the Arduino and IMU. This is really the end game here, and we're hoping to get uh, all of the data that we can from this launch. This time around, we were launching the payload on a much more reliable rocket. With the motors that were being used, it was expected to reach 30,000 feet in only a few seconds. We attach our electronics securely, drill holes for the video, activated the recording, and then send the rocket to the pad. Okay, you're on. Oh, you're on. Keep it. Anyone got a Duracell? Our launch window with the FAA was set to expire at 1.30, and we launched at 1.29. The rocket has gone up and it's come down somewhere. We've got GPS tracking and we're driving to the destination where we believe the rocket should be gently laying on the ground waiting for us. So this here is our payload bay and something inside is beeping so it's not destroyed as far as we know. It's, it's okay. It's okay. So right now we got the data, excellent, around six minutes of flight uh, with GPS data and sensors. It worked, it's an entire success. <laughs>